It's got a soul, this hero farm. It falls asleep inside my arms. We work the fields under the stars. The love is here at Goldshaw Farms. A city life, yeah, it had its charms. But we would dream of the fields under the stars. I fall asleep. Inside its arms, the love is here at Goldshaw Farms. The love is here at Goldshaw Farms. Hello, everybody. Good evening. Happy Wednesday. Happy March. We're full on into mud season here at Goldshaw Farm. I'm Morgan, as you guys probably know. And thank you for joining me tonight for yet another farm meeting. Uh, we do these every month. These always happen the first Wednesday of the month where I just try to get together and hang out with you guys and answer questions and hear feedback. And I don't know, really talk about all the things that I usually just don't have time to cover in a regular old video and just kind of hang out with you guys. And so welcome to the farm meeting and uh, cracking my favorite Worcester water here, not sponsored. Uh, Today's flavor is orange vanilla, in case those folks are wondering. But uh, yeah, I see everybody coming in here in the chat. Oh, wow. Look at all the folks. Wow. Hey, we got Trina from So and Tear. We got Diane, the cat lady. Good to see you, Diane. Um, who else? Oh, wow. I see D. I see so many folks. Texas Roast. What's going on? Assassin's, Assassin 32. Is it Was it your birthday yesterday as well? Did I see that? properly in a comment today um if that's the case that's crazy um as some folks are are mentioning yeah yesterday was my birthday so uh it was my 44th birth birthday yesterday it was kind of an interesting day um so uh number one um you know just kind of had like a chill relaxed um like early part of the day but then um uh, the first Tuesday of March every year in Vermont is what's known as town meeting day. Um, so like Vermont's got this very rich tradition of all the towns in Vermont have kind of their town meeting where everybody in town gets together in a meeting hall and you vote on major town issues. You have elections for like things like mayor or select board and that sort of thing. Um, and, uh, <clears throat> yeah, we had ours yesterday. I love doing it. I've done videos on town meeting day before in the past here, at least our Peachum town meeting day. Um, and so it was, it was a lot of fun, but actually the craziest part was I got elected to office yesterday at town meeting day. So I'm now, um, Peachum's school district treasurer, I believe was, was what I was elected to, which when you're in a tiny little town, like we're in, like people wear a lot of different hats and that is now a hat that I'm wearing, which is crazy. Never been elected to anything in my entire life. So, uh, it was kind of cool. And so, yeah, that happened all my birthday and, uh, that's, that's, uh, yeah, it's, I, I know it's, it's really crazy. Katrina. Like, it's like, I, I was not ex expecting that at all. Uh, but there we are. Um, Hey, what's up ramen noodle. Yeah, town meet. Yeah, see, it, you know, I, I say it's a Vermont thing, and it's very strong in Vermont. But but town meetings are like a thing that happened kind of all over New England. Um, it's a, it's not a very uncommon thing. I think it's like a great uh, like uh, form of democracy in a lot of ways for small towns, and and I I absolutely love it as a tradition. Um, <laughs> so yeah, there you go. Hey, what's up, RJ? I I did go to the Peachum Winter Carnival, which was uh, President's Day weekend here in Peachum. So that was like a couple weeks ago. Um, yes, my buddy Alfred was driving his tractor around with the little hay wagon attached to it, pulling people around. I did not ride in it, but I did go to the carnival. <laughs> Um, hey, what's going on there, Ali Petunia? And by the way, guys, if you have questions too, um, feel free to drop them in the chat. Uh, it's easier if you put your uh, question up in all caps, like Sarah's done here. What's going on, Sarah? Oh, geez, does that mean you have had to put up with Butch and other Chris? No, no. So, so here's the thing. This is the myth. Like, but folks like Butch, they don't live in our town. Like, our town is like really. I love the people in our town. It's really fun. Like, town meeting day is cool. Like, we have like these conversations, talk about where things are going as a town, vote on the budgets, vote on major issues. Um, and, uh, you know, actually, what's cool too is like we have like a potluck lunch in the middle of the day. So, like, you know, you have some meeting, then you have a couple, like, you have lunch, and then you have the second half of the meeting. And um, I actually made uh, roast beef um, for everybody. It was for the 
part of the pot, pot lug, and so it was a lot of fun. So no, it, it was like Sarah. It was like a very good event. I was very. I, I'm. This is actually the second time that my birthday coincided with town meeting day here in Peachum, and uh, yeah, I love it when it happens. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, thank you, Matt. I really appreciate that. <laughs> Uh, okay how many pigs this year okay oh this is a good first question here uh stonic so um i'm going doing i think four or five pigs um and i'm gonna actually be putting up orders very soon if folks want to reserve a half a hog um i'm gonna have on the website probably in the next couple of weeks like a, a little reservation form where you can put down a deposit and you can come to the farm and pick up your meat in the fall and so um yeah that that will be happening um so so yeah so but like i said it'll be four or five and i'll be selling either halves or holes um i haven't exactly landed on the price but it's gonna be probably like around five fifty six dollars a pound for a half um and a little bit cheaper for a whole um i'm still working that out so so don't quote me on that but y you'll get a price discount if you go for the whole versus the half that is guaranteed Okay, Jackson, what's going on? What are my big plans for 2024? <laughs> Oops. Um, well, I think the, the one big plan that I'm working on as we speak is the hatchery is coming along really well. Um, I'm putting out another video that's kind of documenting that. There, there'll be a couple more videos probably going into next week too documenting it. I actually just, I mean, because I'm always a little bit ahead of where things are in real life, um, I just put the door on today and I started putting on the vent fans that are going to go so that I can have like an exhaust system in there. Um, I, I like, I had to do the first stage of that. I could have f easily finished it today, but I had to let the spray foam dry before I tried to mount the fans into the hole that I have for it. So it's getting very close to being done. Um, like I, I will actually finish building the hatchery tomorrow. Um, the video I post tomorrow though, won't show me finishing it. Uh, if that makes sense. Um, so there you have it. <laughs> oh, Linda, thank you. And by the way, j just shout out to everybody who's watching either on Facebook or on YouTube. And like Linda here is on uh, Facebook. So shout out. I see everybody's chats just in case you're wondering. Um, so yeah, it's there. Um, but Jackson, I want to come back to your question. Uh, other big plans. Um, I'm planning on developing the spring. Uh, we have a whole bunch of calves that should be dropping in about a month. Um, I was actually just out there looking at the girls today and, uh, I'm going to guess I have five or six calves get born this year. Um, and probably in the, in the next couple of weeks, I'll have the first one drop. Like my, if I'm going to guess which cow do I think is going to drop a cow for or calf first, I think Ariel is going to be the first to calve. Um, if I had to guess And Ariel, in case you guys don't know, she's the cow that lets me milk her. She's the one who lets me brush her. She is my favorite cow by far. And, uh, yeah, they're, um, yeah, there you go. What happened to the pigs? Well, uh, I mean, I mean, I don't know. I feel kind of grisly saying this because I know there was a clip of the pigs in the in the opener that I played this this evening. Um, uh, they they were part of our dinner tonight. <laughs> I don't know how else to put it, but uh, that, yeah, the the pigs are back in. Uh, I think I think it was like the last week of October, the first week of November. They went off to freezer camp. Um, so yeah. Sarah asks, elected offices aren't voted on regular elections on the ballot with all the other? No, so so our town offices and town roles are elected on town meeting day. And that's that's a, a something that happens across Vermont. Like, for example, yesterday, Vermont uh, Burlington just elected their new mayor, and she was elected. Yeah, that happens on town meeting day. And so, like, the, the state elections all happen on election day, like, you know, that first Tuesday in November, like everything else. The presidential election, obviously, we vote. But, like, even our presidential primary yesterday was yesterday as well. So, you know, no, Vermont's got, like, this, like, long tradition of, like, that first week of March doing, like, local town offices stuff. Always, always have their elections then, too. Um, I've net you Okay, so RJ is asking about mud season, and, and I actually even titled this live stream about it. We are having one heck of a mud season so far this year. Like by my count, I have joked with a lot of people about this. So I feel like I keep saying it, but like, this is like the sixth mud, mud season we've had so far this year where I feel like we had a mud season in December. We had two mud seasons in January. We had two mud seasons in February. And we're now in the midst of another one where it's been raining the last couple of days. I, I fed the cattle hay yesterday and it was disgusting. Like I completely ripped up parts of the ground 
down. Like there, I, I'm going to have to go in there and smooth some of that out when everything dries out. But I, I didn't get stuck, RJ, and I haven't gotten st- ever stuck on the roads. Allison's gotten stuck on the roads before, but I haven't. Um, but I but I drive a pickup truck around, particularly in mud season, and so. I think that helps me not to say that you're completely uh, uh, invulnerable, but it does help having a, a larger vehicle like that. Baby B is doing great with the brush training. You know what? I'll when I shoot the next video, I will do a brushing session with Baby B. She she just chills out and lets me do it now. Like Baby B is officially like fully brush trained at this point, which is really really nice. Um, it, it's it's really I don't know. It's very rewarding to have that. Uh. The geese have started laying. So um, uh, they just started dropping eggs last week, and I'm getting a couple of eggs a day now. And so uh, I'm actually starting – I have a bunch of back orders already for goose eggs to sell, and so I'm already starting to fill those orders right as we speak um, right now. Kate. Hey, what's going on, Kate? Um, So Kate is asking, will – So will we stain or repaint the new barn? So uh, we will stain the new barn in the fall. So I've been trying to like let it get a patina for about a year and then we're going to stain it. And so the plan is uh, probably like September-ish time period. We're going to be staining the barn. Um, Just trying to keep it like that natural wood color. Oh, Texas Roast has to ask about the bees. So um, one of the hives is doing amazing. One of the hives is very, very unhealthy. It looks like like they just seem weak. Their their numbers are way down. Um, I worry about them. And then one of the hives is completely dead. Um, so out of the three hives I went into the winter with, um, I don't know. I'm either gonna have one hive or two. I don't know. We're gonna see. Uh, the hive that's dead is the hive that used the flow hive, and I don't like the flow hive, and I will never use the flow hive ever again. I'm done with flow hives. Um, I've done like a one year experiment with it. It's harder to manage. It's harder to get honey out of unless you have like a, an abundance of honey. Um, it's hard to gauge how much honey you're taking from the hive so that you don't deplete them too much, especially because we're in a colder climate. We got to give them more honey, um, and so I hate it. And so I I give a big thumbs down. It might work in Australia. It might be great in other climates. It is not good for keeping bees here. And so I will not use it anymore. And I will be retiring it. And I don't know. I'll probably sell it on Craigslist or something later this year. Hey, Finn the cat. Um, Any ideas on the cows might be having their calves? My guess is the first calves will be coming at the end of this month, maybe early April. Um, Based on just timing alone, that would be really the earliest base because I, I put uh, Macho Man in there with them. Uh, it was like June 20th or something. And so uh, that would be my guess um, is is like l- the end of this month would be the first one. And, and like I said, if I was going to be placing bets right now, Ariel would be the first one I'd go with. Um yeah, well, so and and by the way, Finn, I'm seeing that you're you're asking about uh, Baby B needing more cute siblings. So Baby B is going to be separated from the rest of the herd this year. She and Alice B. Toklas, who is the uh, the little heifer calf, Charlay heifer calf that I bought earlier this winter, those two are going to be kept separate. I'm going to keep them in the lower pasture um, while the rest of the herd is on the upper pasture because I don't want to have either of them bred this year. They're going to be yearling calves. And so much like I did with um, Bonnie and Belinda last year, I'm going to just keep those two separate. And, and they're going to be friends. The calves that get born will stay with their moms all summer, and then I will probably separate them out. A lot of the calves that get born this year, I'm probably going to try to sell or trade. Um, and in particular, try to trade um, like heifers for heifers. So the, the bull calves that I have, I will keep, and I'll probably castrate and raise them for meat. Um, the heifer calves that I have, I don't think I'm going to keep them, but what I'm going to try to do is, is swap them with other folks who have highlands so that I can keep more fresh genetics on the farm. And essentially, um, you know, that way macho man can keep breeding all these ladies that I have on the farm and I can keep doing that. My goal is probably in about two or three years to get big enough where I can actually split the herd and then like I'll start to keep the offspring of Macho Men, but uh, that will be a couple years away still, probably like three-ish years if I had to guess. Um, and, and so until then, what I'm going to be trying to do is like trade off uh, heifers or sell those heifers and you know just keep adding new animals who aren't related to Macho Man. That's going to that's be my goal over the next couple of years. 
Barb asks, how's Ron Swanson doing without the... Ron's doing good. She she still hangs out with all the geese. Like, she's a duck who thinks she's a goose. She's doing really well. She's hanging out with all the geese. And, yeah, no, she's doing really well, honestly. Yeah, so, Hayden, tomorrow's video is all about the new hatching room. So, um, it's going to probably end up being about six, maybe seven videos in total. Um, but, uh, I keep having these little misadventures too that happen that take me off the farm. Like tomorrow, I'm just going to tease this tomorrow. I get called to the state Capitol and it interrupts me putting in insulation. That's literally what happened uh, last week. Um, and so, yeah, that, that'll be coming. Oh, Hey, Lil. So Lil Barncat just came up here and joined me. Lil, do you want to say hi to everybody? Come here. Come here. Come on up and say hi. I know you guys are excited to see Lil usually. Come on, come on, sweetie. I'll give you some treats. Come on. Can you come up? Come on, Lil. All right, I'm going to answer their question while I convince. Uh, okay. Eric, or Erica, sorry. I'm not sure if it's Eric Avenable or Erica Avenable. Um, but either way, they ask um, any tips on getting my first geese. And what I would say is hey, Lil. Well, see, here she is. Um, you know, number one, congratulations, because I think geese are the best form of poultry. They are my favorites by far. Uh, number two, I would say, you know, really focus on making sure they have clean bedding and clean water. Um, particularly when you have goslings, that's the hardest thing to do because they can make such a mess. Um, three, uh, by day three, start introducing them to various grasses and dandelion greens, particularly dandelion greens. And, and what I always find is nice is at least around here, we're getting our dandelion flush, uh, right around the time that I'm having my goslings. And so what I'll go out and do is actually pick a bunch of dandelion greens and give them to the goslings. And, um, it's a, just a good practice because it gives them a lot of nutrients that they're not getting from other feeds. Um, and it gets them used to eating grass because by week six, I usually cut my goslings off and they're not eating any grain or any like feed. They're just eating grasses and they're basically moving to free range for, you know, until winter basically, or until they get slaughtered. Um, and so, you know, start early with like grasses. Don't give them hay. You can't give them hay, but if you have fresh grasses and you pick them and give them like you pick a bunch of grass and leave it to them for the day and then give them fresh grass the next day and the next day, um, that's like a good thing to do. Um, and then the other thing is really when you're thinking about their feed, what I find that works really well is poultry, um, like, you know, like unmedicated chick starter is really good as a base feed. But then I typically will add brewer's yeast or nutritional yeast to that so that they're getting niacin. And so the combination of that feed plus the dandelion greens gives them a good nutritional mix that I find, at least for me in my instances, does really well. And so th those would be some... Uh, uh, suggestions for you. Hey, Olivia. Um, did you give the special treat to the outdoor barn cats? I don't see any. Yeah. Um, I I've given a couple of special treats to the bar outdoor barn cats, uh, including a can of tuna fish just yesterday. Um, so yes, they, they've been doing it. <laughs> I think the 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 pigs the pigs that I raised last year as well as the ones that I'll be raising this year are going to be like uh, Duroc crosses. Um, I like them because they grow pretty well. They're very efficient. They do really well with the brewers grains, which is a big part of how I'm feeding my pigs last year as well as this year. Um, they're hardy. And they grow fast. Like, you know, there's certain breeds, like people are always talking about, like Idaho pasture pigs or uh, Cooney Cooney or Mangalitsa, which, uh, you know, and I've, I've eaten them, the meat from those animals. They're, they're wonderful, but they take a lot longer to mature and they uh, take more feed to relative to like the pound per meat they get. Like their feed conversion isn't as good. And so, um, at least for me, at least the way I'm doing it right now, I don't have an intention to go that route. Not to say that they're bad animals or that they shouldn't and that they don't work for other people. At least as, as I'm going about it, um, that's, that's how I'm going to go at it. All right. I learned my lesson last year, Ali, um, in that um, basically I let Allison name the pigs because Allison loves the pigs. And so I tried to name the pigs last year. It didn't work. They got rejected and Allison renamed them. I'm just going to let Allison name them right out of the gate this year. And so, so that'll be the way it goes. <clears throat> 
Are you still planning on raising sheep? So Lois, no, I've actually made the decision not to raise sheep this year. You know, so so what Lois is referencing is, yeah, I was seriously considering adding sheep to the mix. And what I decided to do is focus on just getting more efficient with the cattle and the pigs versus trying to add an entirely new and different animal. And so I'm adding cattle and I'm probably add a few more cattle. I'm going to be having a whole bunch of calves and that will be where you see me spend a lot of time this year and continuing to get better with working with cattle. And you're, you, you know, I was actually seriously considering not raising any pigs last, uh, this year, but have opted to raise the pigs and, um, basically, uh, you know, go that route. And because of that, I won't be, um, raising sheep. Not to say never, but just not this year. <sighs> maple seltzer is good, Ben. I like maple seltzer, but I got to admit, and and I know this is like a very polarizing, <laughs> polarizing, uh, polarizing thing. I love this orange vanilla flavor. It's like a, it's like an unsweetened creamsicle. Is the only way I can uh, equate it. And uh, yeah. Hey, what's up, Carlina? And what's going on, Joyce? Okay, let's see. Okay, all right. I'm gonna jump ahead because I'm I'm seeing I'm way behind here. Oh, I'll keep doing moments of Zen. I'll probably do another one um pretty soon. Uh, yeah, maybe maybe then like give it two videos and I'll probably do it. So ramen noodle. This is actually something that last week sap was running, but I didn't have my taps in yet. I'm probably going to put my taps in, I don't know, in the next couple of days. Um, but I don't know. The weather forecast is not looking like good sap season. So this might be a, a little bit of a lost season when it comes to maple syrup. We'll see. Um, but I will be putting in taps probably by the weekend. Right now, it's too warm for the sap to be running. It's like, I don't know, it's like uh, in like the low 40s and it's rainy. It's not even going to go below 35 tonight. Um, and so, yeah. Oh, lime and gin ginger polar. I love, yeah, like I, I'm a big fan of all the polar flavors. Okay, I I, I made a, a version of this a couple of years ago. If you look for uh, Goldshaw Farm Chickshaw, you'll see me build a Chickshaw, which is what I was using for a few years. Um, that would be my suggestion. I also made another one where I made the Eggmobile that I used. I will probably build a new one, and so I will make another one later this spring, but that will still be a few weeks off. Aw, thank you, Paula. Um, okay. All right. Oh, the Creature Catcher. That's a great name. Uh, you inspired me raising you to love it, but they keep killing the Gosling. Oh, yeah. I've had bad luck, too. Um, honestly, Creature Catcher, I pretty much have given up on having uh, geese raise the Goslings. I just do I, – I do a better job. Like, my mortality rate for geese um, or for Goslings is like, you know, if I can get them p past the first three days – like my overall mortality rate, I say is about 90%. But if I can get them past the first three days, I think my mortality rate's like 99%. Like th they survive to adulthood um, when I'm raising them. It's below 50% when it comes to the geese raising them. It's almost like somewhere between like, I don't know, 40 and 50%. I haven't done the calculation in a while. Um, but yeah, my what I found is just... I am so much better off just hatching the eggs myself and brooding them and raising them to adulthood than, than letting the geese do it. I, it's not to say that I, I've had goslings raise up with the parents. Like I've been able to do it. It's just your odds are not nearly as good. And so, so I don't do that. Abby is doing wonderful. She's, she's such a sweetheart. I, I love that dog. I mean, she's a goofball and I don't think she's ever going to make for a good poultry dog, but she's, she's, I don't know. I just, I love her so much. Um, I actually, am, I've been thinking about this. I'll, I'll, I'll give you guys a sneak preview. I'll probably talk about this in an upcoming video. Um, so I'm going to try to keep Abby on the upper pasture again this year. So she had an injury that like I was trying to do it and trying to train her up there. And then she got injured and then it just kind of screwed up the whole summer. And then we had the floods and it just like it turned into a mess. I'm going to try to do that this year. Um, but because I'm going to do that, I might not actually move the chickens up there. So I have the last couple of years had the chickens following the cattle, but uh, I might not do that for two reasons. One, it makes it easier to keep Abby up there and has like one less thing I have to worry about. But then two, 
um, I want to do a little bit of test and see how much of an impact do the chickens make on my ability to have the, the flies controlled? Like how much do they actually do? I don't know that answer. And so I almost want to do it as like a control year to see if like I have drastically worse flies. And if I do, I'll actually just move the chickens up there again. It's not too hard to change my mind. Um, but uh, if I don't, then I probably would keep them separate because it's, it's a lot more work to have to move them like that with the chickens. Hi, Lil. <laughs> Lil's hanging out with me on my desk. Usually she's not allowed up here, but since we're hanging out together, uh, I'll let her be up here. So yeah, so as all part of that though, Abby, the plan will be once the cattle move up to the top of the pasture, I would have her up there as well. Um, ooh, ooh. Hey, Ken. Uh, so the cattle can have twins. It's not as common as like, say, sheep or goats, where like it's very frequent for sheep or goats to have twins. Cattle, it's more rare. Um, one actually interesting quirk is if you have a male calf and a female calf, the female calf most likely won't be able to have offspring. Um, she'll be known as what I think it's called a free martin. And um, it's because she's exposed to the bull calf's testosterone in utero or in, in the womb. Yeah, say in, in utero. I guess that's in utero. Um, and and so because of that, uh, she wouldn't be able to have offspring. And so um, there is that. But uh, I don't know. Maybe I'll have twins. I I gotta say, Ariel is looking massive. And so if, I think she's the most likely to drop calves soon. And I also think she like would be the most likely to have twins. Um, she's she's yeah she's she's a house. Can you do a video on the AI you use to the hatchery? I mean, so Sarah, I, I, I'm not sure what I would do in the video that I didn't already do. Um, I actually, I'm planning on shooting a video tomorrow for my other channel, which I want to talk about in a second. Um, and, and, uh, all right, let me break this up because I'm going in like six directions at once to your questions. <laughs> so number one, I'm not exactly sure what I would do, but like, I mean, I just use chat GPT and, and basically ask chat GPT what to do. I think the thing that confused people is I like, I animated a robot and that was actually just me doing that in, in editing. Um, like I know how to do like little animations. And so I just made that up. So that wasn't actually there. I just took the chat GPT voice and I sent it to like an animated character, um, which if you're watching my other channel, you see me doing that a lot because I just, I love making these uh, videos with animation and uh, <laughs> yeah, there you go. So um, that that's that the thing though, that I am going to be doing tomorrow is so I don't know if you guys know this, but I, I got an Apple vision pro like, you know, one of these guys, like, uh, I don't know. Let's see, get it turned on here. So I got an Apple vision pro. I've been using it to do all sorts of stuff it's become like my favorite thing to like use, like when I'm editing and, and working out here, um, particularly like working at my computer, but just working in my office in general tomorrow, I'm going to actually be using this. I'm going to try to build a table inside the new barn, um, because I want a place to hang out and like maybe have meals with people and maybe like host a poker game and all of that. And I'm going to be using the Apple vision pro to do that. I'll also be using AI to do that. And so as part of that video, Sarah, it might give you what you're looking for in terms of like the AI stuff. Um, so that is a video to come, uh, I'll shoot it tomorrow. I probably won't post it next week, but it'll probably be the following week. Um, and that will be on the Morgan Gold channel, which, by the way, guys, I don't know if you know this, but I have, I have, you know, I know I cut back to on the Gold Shop Farm only doing two videos a week um, at the start of this year. And that's because I started this other channel. And on this other channel, I have been doing um, a new video every week. Um, and I'm going to share it with you right now. Uh, I'm not going to drop the link in the chat because I don't want to screw some things up from an algorithm perspective, but if you just search for Morgan gold on, um, YouTube, you will actually be able to, uh, find it. And, uh, yeah, there, like there's a whole bunch of interesting stuff. I've done videos on AI. I've done videos on talking dogs. I did a video on the Apple vision pro. I actually just did a video um, yesterday talking about why old people give bad advice. And I include myself in that because I just turned 44 and I feel like that's old. Um, and so like, those are the types of videos that I'm putting out right now. And it's been a lot of fun. Um, I've been having so much fun making these. These are like all videos that don't have much to do with the farm and are more like interesting things that I find interesting. 
Um, and that means that the, you know, farm videos are just now exclusively focused on the farm. And these videos are exclusively focused, not on the farm. And that's kind of how I'm doing it this year and sort of seeing how that goes. But I have been having so much fun making these so far and, uh, yeah, you should check it out if you haven't already. It's uh, Morgan gold. Um, or you can just go to youtube.com slash at Morgan gold and you'll find it. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, I, I don't know. I, I have really enjoyed making these videos. Um, and yeah, some of the animals do end up in the videos, but, uh, it, it's been so, I don't know. I, I, I am having so much fun making these videos. It's been such a nice, like additional creative outlet. And so, yeah, if you guys haven't already, be sure to check it out. Um, and in particular, yeah, this video, I, I'm really proud of the one about why I, old people give bad advice um it, it talks a lot about like intergenerational conflict and kind of you know the distinctions between baby boomers and gen x and millennials and gen z even getting into gen alpha a little bit and uh yeah that that's that's the focus of that video yo what's up there kev or kawasar oh why did i say kev? i was looking at the next name sorry about that <laughs> um so yeah do I own any Lego? Uh, not, I mean, when I was a kid, I played with Lego all the time. Um, I don't particularly, oh, li little scratching to get out, but I don't, I'm not a particularly big Lego guy these days. Here, well, you want to get out? You want to go out? You can go out. Or I think she just maybe wants me to feed her. I, that, that's actually, I think what she's going for. Um, but we'll see. Oh, hey, Debbie, such a, uh, a very prescient question. Um, like I was saying, I, again, the goal of that channel is not to have like a billion views or a billion uh, subscribers. It's to, like make videos that I like I find like really creatively satisfying. Um, and and it, like, you know what it is too about that? It's like it's giving me a chance to explore and experiment with things like um, like animation. You know, like I was saying that earlier like you know like here i'm just going gonna go to a scene here like i have like all these scenes where it's like um i'll be able to bring in animation and like you know animate characters like this character is an animation that i made that's not typically something i do in a video and i, I just have so much fun making that sort of thing and so yeah that's what you're seeing um but yeah all right uh let me keep answering more questions hey don good to see you Hey, Samantha, I might get turkeys um, someday. I don't know. See, here's the thing. With with turkeys, you have to brood them separately from your other birds. And so I, if I brood turkeys, then where, you know, where am I brooding my other birds? And I, like, I already have those as businesses. And it's just, it's like another thing. And, you know, I don't necessarily see the advantage to it. But, but I think someday I will probably do both sheep and turkeys. Just I, I don't necessarily see it in the cards this year. And yes, exactly as Texas Roast says, I, I have a friend who raises turkeys on his farm and we typically will trade once a year, like a goose and a turkey. And so I'm getting good local turkey meat from somebody who's raising tur turkeys at scale and he's getting a good Christmas goose. And so it, just, it kind of is a nice like win-win. Howdy, Karen. Good to see you. I don't know what I would do, Lynn. I mean, I don't know if I ever will, but like, uh, um, I don't know what I would do. I, I, if anybody has any ideas, let me know. I'd be, I'd be curious to, to hear it. When taking to a processor, how far do you have to schedule? Oh, we're like about a year out or nine months out. Uh, and so, yeah, you, you gotta really make sure you, you have a, a heads up when you're doing the processors around here. Cause they get booked up really quickly. Um, yeah, it, there, there's a really good processor, who's USDA inspected from us. It, nah, they're about, I don't know, half hour, 40 minutes away. Uh, that's the best option for us. Uh, Jill, I don't expect to get another barn cat anytime soon. Um, I actually think it's working out really well with just Pablo and Ginny. And uh, so, yeah, for the time being, I, I don't have uh, uh, any, uh, any plans to add any additional barn cats. Oh, well, hey, hey, Lil. The teenage gardener is saying hello. So Lil's trying to get my attention because I think she's mad that I'm not feeding her more. I don't know. She, she's been like all about complaining about food lately. Hey, Penny. Um, are you still doing the tree seed? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I will probably pull up my chestnut seedlings. Like, so basically 
back in November, I planted a, bu a couple buckets of chestnut seed. I will pull them up in late May and put them in beds and then raise them until the fall. And then I'll, I'll sell them, uh, sell most of them actually. Do you think you will try other cow breeds that have horns? Um, I mean, maybe like I really like the Charlay. So we, we added three Charlay earlier this year who don't have horns. Um, uh, so yeah, but, but yeah, you know, I'm not a, where to go. You know, I'm not a, a, a huge, uh, 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 ice fishing guy. Like I just, I just don't have the time. <laughs> I'm not opposed to it. I, I like it. I've, I've gone like twice in my life and it's, it's been fun. It's just, I don't know. It takes time and I'm, I've got so many other things going on. It's, it's really, it's just, it's, a, it, it is one of those things where you just only have so much time in a given day. And, uh, you know, it's not the first thing I'd pick, even though I do, uh, uh, like to do them. Do people like the videos where you don't talk? I don't because I love hearing you talk. Oh, well, that's very kind of you. Sorry, I'm just turning off my heater. Um, like, I think that some people like them a lot. Uh, actually, you know, my most viewed video of last year was a video where I didn't, I, I don't think I said a single word. Um, so some people do like that. I, I like, I like both. I like, Excuse me. I like making those videos. I like making videos where I talk. Um, I probably won't do a non-talking video for a couple more weeks because just right now it's a really tough time. Like chores on the farm are relatively easy and there's not much cinematic about it and it's really ugly. And so it's hard to make those videos in those conditions where I don't talk. And so you'll see me probably talking more. But then once things start happening where like I have the cattle out on pasture and I have pigs around and I have like baby birds and all that stuff going on that's when I'll probably do more videos where I just don't say a word because I like doing those too. It's, it's, it's fun to make those. I don't know. I don't know what else to tell you. Okay. All right. I'm jumping ahead. Uh, so, uh, I mean, we're out of the season for most hound hunting. I think like coyotes, uh, are the only thing in season right now for hounds. Um, and we don't really have much of that in this area thankfully um but uh yeah like that season really picks up starting in the and fall i 100 percent agree with you toby does look very noble He's, he is a very very noble creature no doubt about it abby's new fall toby's noble that there's no no other way around it well thank you paul i really appreciate it Honestly, Katie, that's actually one of the things I worry about the most. I know for a fact that Toby will not miss Abby one bit. In fact, I think Toby would actually prefer to have Abby up on the upper pasture. But I think Abby will miss Toby and and feel like she's being left out. And that's going to be one of the hardest things I got to work through with her. Um, and I don't know. I'm not, I'm, I might have problems with that. And that might actually be the thing that... Um, uh, uh, does does that yeah oh by the way paul i didn't really realize happy birthday to you in advance um congratulations that's, that's always exciting yes allison has started to plan out her garden i'm gonna probably start seedlings uh next week uh yeah we're, we're getting into the gardening mode for sure um yeah can I offer the pink Abby in three X? So here's the challenge. So, so um, hang on, let me pull this up. <clears throat> so I, I'm kind of limited by the sizes that my supplier has. Um, so, so unfortunately, if they run out of a certain size or color combination, like there's nothing I can do for it. Uh, um, like, uh, and, and I try, what I tried to do was actually pick a brand of shirt and type of shirt that was as size inclusive as possible. And so, you know, I, I genuinely kind of know what it's like when something that you're, you're looking for isn't offered in your size. And so I know how much that sucks. Um, so, so I, I, I get that part. Um, and so when I was like offering this new line of shirts and I'm actually gonna be working on a new shirt very soon, um, 
I, you know, we, I was able to find somebody who went up to 4XL. The problem is they, like you see here, and, and I think this is what you're, you're asking about ramen noodle, like they run short on certain colors. And so, yeah, the pink's out of stock, the gray's out of stock, and the orange is out of stock. But yeah, the green is the only one currently in stock. So I, yeah, I, it sucks. And I wish I had a better answer than that, but that is the, the, the truth of it all. So, yeah. But if you guys actually want these shirts, they are still available. They'll still be available for a little bit longer. And then uh, I'll probably take them offline for the new shirt that's going to be coming, which I, I think you're going to like. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, I'm not going to give anything away just yet. Hey, Steven. Um, yeah, I've, I've actually given the chickens the fly paper, and they do a really good job picking it clean. And so that's actually become how I dispose of that paper. So the cycle in the summer is I'll typically – um, you know, have the, the fly papers by the cattle, catch a whole bunch of flies. Once those fill up, I take that and I give it to the chickens, the chickens, pick it clean. Then I crumple up the paper and throw it in the garbage. Um, and that's, that is the process. So Olivia, the cattle or the calves that I have born, um, it, it'll depend a little bit on sex. So the males will have dead rock star names. The females will have, um, names that begin with B. So since all of them are the offspring of uh, moms that have A names, they will all have B names. Um, I, I'm going to actually try to breed Bonnie and Belinda this year. And when those calves are born, they're going to end up having C names. Um, but uh, for right now, we're, we're just going uh, with that. Yeah, there's an Abby dog shirt. Uh, just go to goldshawfarm.com or, or here, I'm going to drop this in the chat um and yeah you can get your own abby dog shirt uh it's the chaotic good abby dog shirt i i actually really like this design um uh, a woman by the name of michaela mills who's a really talented painter she actually made hang on, i'm gonna show you she actually made this painting for me it's a it's a painting of abby dog in front of our barn on a rock and so this is actually the actual painting that that shirt is based on and uh yeah i think it just it, I, I really like it and so yeah it's available <laughs> which ai do i yeah so so i think the question of like uh yeah for like a like generative text, like conversations like that like where i was asking a uh ai bot to help me design a, a chicken uh, incubator room. Um, that was, I was using chat GPT. Um, when you guys see me use images, I'm typically doing like stuff in uh, mid journey. Um, I mean, I've, I've, I've experimented with other ones on both fronts, but those are like my two favorite. You know what? I didn't, I, I actually played around with Claude three. I, I did not like it, um, nearly as much. Uh, I, I mean, and, and I know that that's very much a, a like subjective thing, but yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's why I confused you. Okay. I got it. You know, it, it was just, I think for, for those scenes in the video, that was just chat GPT. You know, Finn, I, I think you, you are very much right. I, Abby both likes Toby and she likes me. She's she's kind of a needy gal. I mean, I love her. She's chaotic good, but she's a little bit needy. And and so I, I think it all kind of plays into that. So so I think I think that that's accurate though. I'll probably try to do uh uh a um I will probably do a uh a tree video later this year. I usually do like one or two tree videos a year. How's Alfred? Haven't seen him all. So Alfred's good. He's um, he actually is working on a couple jobs that are not as close right now, and so it's harder for him to get over to the farm to do stuff with me. Um, he'll be back though. He's got a couple projects lined up here on the farm for this summer, and so he'll be back around a lot in the summer. Um, but yeah, no, he's doing good. I just saw him yesterday. Oh, that warms my heart, Jennifer. I'm, I'm glad to hear you're having fun with it, too. I'm having so much fun with that channel. It's it's uh, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> and you love the Montreal video. Yeah, I mean, it's like it's like fun stuff like that, like just being able to like wander around Montreal. Here's a funny thing. So if you guys saw that video um, on, on the other channel about uh, metrics, um, I actually shot that while I was in Montreal. So um, actually for Allison's birthday, 
uh, we went up to Montreal for a couple of days and, uh, you know, just like to get away. Allison in particular likes to have some city time here and there. And, um, so, so we went to Montreal and the thing is, I am at this point in my life hardwired to be like wide awake by 530 every morning, regardless of what I do. And so I would wake up every morning and Allison would want to sleep in. And so I ended up like having time each morning while we were up there. And I decided, well, rather than just sit around and stare at my phone, let me go outside. And I had an idea for a video I wanted to do. And so I shot this video just walking around the streets of Montreal, like going on a rant that I'd been thinking about. The funniest part was I got recognized like four or five times by different people in Montreal and it like totally blew my mind. I did not expect that in the least bit that like, um, yeah, that would happen, but it was crazy. It was so much fun and everybody was so nice in Montreal. I, I love going to Quebec in general. Um, I actually want to start learning French so that I can better go to Quebec. I mean, for us, like particularly like Magog uh, and, and Sherbrooke, which are, I don't know, they're about an hour, a little over an hour away from the farm. Like they're like fun little towns to go to just over the other side of the border. And so it's not that hard for us to go to Quebec. And so I, I enjoy doing that. Um, and so you'll probably see that. And yes, if you're curious about seeing me talk while I wander the streets of Montreal, it's actually in this video where I do that. This is a really good question, Shmuel, and I can actually explain it for you. So what it comes down to is um, the genetic issues that you're going to face are actually much more significant with a lot of mammals than you are with birds. Birds actually just in general in nature have a high tendency to inbreed anyway. And so there's just a lot less uh, genetic risk with birds um, than, than there is with mammals. And so that's why you see like me taking a lot of caution with uh, my cattle and a lot less caution with my birds. I mean, with my birds, I'm usually every year or two rotating the male birds out so that there is more genetic diversity and I'm bringing in like new drakes or new roosters um, or new ganders. But like when it comes to the like the birds, like eh, if there's a little inbreeding, it's not the end of the world. You just have a lot bigger health risks and bad issues when it comes to the cattle. And the other thing with it, you know, with a bird, right? You got a couple of years of a lifespan with a cow, you got like 20 years. And so you, you got to almost think a little bit more about that as well. And so I, I think that that's, I believe, I know that that's why for me personally, I do it. I think other farmers find themselves uh, in that same camp. <laughs> I appreciate you saying that, Samantha. <laughs> Wait, it's harder to mess up the Z. Oh, yeah, there you go. That's well said, yeah. I only feed my flocks once a day. So um, I, I used to actually do it at night, too, but I, I realized it, it just makes a mess, and it's completely unnecessary to feed the birds at night, and I don't give them any water at night because that even makes more of a mess. And so, uh, yeah, uh, I, I only do once a day feeding for the birds. Oh, hey, Dub Games, thank you for that. That's really kind of, by the way, if you guys are wondering, the charity is Peachum Community Housing. So it is a nonprofit that I'm actually on the board of here in Peachum. And the goal is to like actually like really help like uh, create accessible and affordable housing here in this area, which is kind of a hard thing and a big problem. And, and so that's actually my fundraiser for the year. And so, yeah, any donations you give rather like I don't like to do super chats at all, but like um, rather than do that, uh, if you guys want to donate that, that's the cause that we have and like you know you're having fun on these like toss a couple bucks it's totally appreciated and it doesn't even go to me it goes to the the nonprofit. yeah, yeah you know all right i gotta talk to you guys about this because i'm struggling a little bit so last year i did an april fool's video as many of you know where i made the joke in saying that everything's fake and everything's cji and artificial intelligence and all done on a green screen like that was the gimmick that i went into things with last year and it worked too well. It worked so so well that there were a lot of people who completely believe to this day that the farm's not real. I'm not really a farm. Like all of it's fake. Like all of that. Um, like and and that's actually not true. <laughs> Um, it really is it. Like, I mean, it was, it was a joke. It was literally an April fool's joke, but now I'm scared that if I try to do anything, people are going to read into it too much. And so 
I, I will do an April Fool's video, but I'm paranoid about what to, what to do for my April Fool's videos is really the honest answer. Oh, Karen, oh, happy birthday to you, too. That's awesome. Um, yeah, people March 5th represent. What smells worse, bird or cow poop? Um, I mean, if you're doing it right, you shouldn't have too much of a smell from either. Um, but when it's like wet and muddy like this, it's tough with the bird poop. And that, that does not smell as good. I, I, I prefer the smell of cow poop over bird poop. Um, I don't like the smell of either all that much, but yeah. You know, Z-Man, I've done it before in the past. I think I probably won't do it anytime soon because, number one, uh, what you're describing is very hard to do, uh, you know, making something that's, like, you know, platform safe these days uh, because the standards are very unclear. And so I could do my best to be kind of safe and, like, it still could get a strike against me. And so, uh, you know, I, I don't... I don't think I'll do that. And then I, I know for a lot of folks, they don't want to see that either. I know some folks really want to see it. Other folks uh, don't. And so the, it's it's kind of the dilemma I have. And so I don't have any intention of doing something like that anytime soon. Yeah, exactly. Like, you know, usually it doesn't smell bad. Like the hoop coop generally doesn't smell bad because I'm always putting fresh material on and that soaks up all the grossness. But like, if you get like, Lots of bird poop mixed with mud and rain, which is like what we have out there today. It does it, it does not smell good. Um, that that's that's the worst part. It was a lot of fun. You know, we we had we had a really good time just hanging. In. Here's actually the funny thing, because you say it's a weekend. So for us, because my wife works, she works in an emergency room, so she's got like a very weird schedule. And for me, like the weekdays or weekend it doesn't really matter it's all the same work still we actually go away oftentimes we do our weekend stuff uh midweek um just because there's less crowds it's cheaper like it, i don't know it's it's really nice like there's this no effect song about like monday is my favorite day because like every day is a every monday is like a, a saturday um that's kind of our lives now too uh and so uh, yeah there you go but it was a lot, it was a lot of fun getting away to answer your question. Uh, like a Wagyu. Okay. What's going on Orlando? Um, yeah, I don't think I would do one of those. Just, I mean, there's, there's actually a, a farm on the other side of the state who does that. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I can't, I don't, I don't foresee myself getting into Wagyu beef anytime soon. <laughs> yeah. The, the plan will be that this year I want to have macho man, uh, try to sire a couple of calves with um, Amelia and with Astrid. And so, yeah, I'd love to have some Highland Charlet crosses. That would be a goal for me. My favorite ice cream flavor? Uh, well, if I'm just going on the, like, the hardcore traditionals, I'm definitely vanilla over chocolate, which I know is probably very controversial. But I, I, I don't know. I, I like vanilla-y flavored stuff. I like sweet and creamy. That, that, that's, that's, I mean, that's heck. That's why I like orange vanilla uh, seltzer. Uh, so that would be the way I go. If I'm getting more exotic, like, I don't know, like cookie dough or like a salted caramel, those always taste good too. Oh, Samantha's saying that definitely the cow poop smell than the duck poo. Uh, okay, so so here's the thing, Samantha. This is where I'd actually say if you're doing your cattle right, you're not going to have that smell. If you have like a, a manure lagoon for like a conventional dairy, yeah, that will stink to high heaven. Um, like, but like I, I would prefer the, the smell of like my cattle yard to the duck yard on a wet day. Um, but I, I, I know what you mean when you have, like, a big dairy operation like that. It can be a little strong. A little bit, but not totally. Um, Amanda's now totally warmed up to me. Um, uh, Alice is very, very skittish. Amelia is less so. So Amelia is Alice's mom. And then Astrid is kind of in the middle. Uh, yeah. But they, but they have not warmed up nearly as much as the Highlands, any of the Highlands. Okay, I'm going to make another uh, top secret announcement that like only you guys get because you're hanging out here for the farm meeting. Um, so uh, 
I am actually planning on starting to do more live streams of like animal feeds. It won't be for the the weird chickens though, because it's I have a hard time with where they're going to be, particularly in the spring, uh, with like getting Wi-Fi out there to get good coverage for uh, like doing the stream. But when I'm doing the hatching in the new hatchery, I I haven't mentioned this in any videos, but I'm actually also going to be setting it up with lights and cameras so that I can actually live stream from there. And so you guys will be able to watch hatches as well as like when the baby birds are like, you know, their first couple of days old, I want it so that they can actually, like you can actually see them as well. And so uh, those will be things that pop up uh, later this spring. And I think that I think I, I I I'm curious to hear what you guys think. I think it's gonna be cool. I've been reluctant to do camera feeds unless there's something interesting to watch. And I feel like hatchings and like day old birds are interesting to watch. <laughs> All right, here's confession time. I got to admit, and you probably have noticed that I'm engaging less in the comments section of the hatchery videos. And and I knew this was going to be the case, but like I can read it for a little bit and like, yeah, people getting mad at like, like how bad I am at doing construction. And I've never claimed to be good at it. Like I, I, people have always been saying, oh, we want to see you do more build videos. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to do a series of build videos. It's not going to be pretty. And that's what you're getting. But the amount of people who get very angry at me for the way I do stuff, it's like, it's, it gets intense. And I got to admit, I have trouble reading that too much because it just, it like it, I don't know. It saps me of my energy, if you will. Um, and so, uh, uh, yeah, like, uh, yeah, I don't know how else to put it. Like, but that, that's kind of how, um, uh, yeah, I don't know. Because <laughs> that Heather, uh, shoot me an email at goldshaw farm at gmail.com, uh, goldshaw farm at gmail.com. And, uh, I will add you to the list. Yeah. I haven't even put up on the website yet because I'm so, I think I'm, I'm like scheduled out to like late April. And, uh, by that point I'll actually stop selling eggs and I switch over to hatching my own. Um, yeah, there's just been like a big demand people like on the list for like a year. Uh, so yeah. I mean, so I, I've got friends who've got sap, like, you know, sap, sap lines running right now. It's been okay so far. It hasn't been amazing. Uh, and and so, um, yeah, I'm not feeling like I've, I've missed out a lot. I'm just worried that there's not going to be much of a maple season this year based on what the weather forecast is looking like for the next couple of weeks. Um, yeah. If you increase your cattle, will you have enough room for them in the barn? No, actually, I won't. And and so one of the things I got to figure out this year, and, and I'm going to be making plans about it, I probably won't do anything about it, um, is I'll, I'll be able to keep them in the same winter setup next, like this next winter. But then after that, I've got to find a new solution because they will, by that point, have outgrown the area based on the size of my herd. And so I'm working on a long-term plan for how to manage that. And so... Uh, no, no info on that. I'll probably do a video on that at some point in the like the summer. Uh, but uh, yeah. Oh, my chicken! The ducks are doing okay. The chickens are going bonkers. Like I'm getting. Oh gosh, Allison and I were just out. It, it's like it's it's probably about 18 eggs a day right now. So we are in full on flush egg season when it comes to the chickens. <clears throat> So, so Debbie, I, Piper Lili, I just love saying Piper Lili, but Debbie, um, so there's already a dog house that I built last year that Abby has up on the upper pasture. And so she would have that, but I'm actually thinking about actually, uh, getting from one of my neighbors, a calf hutch. So when people raise calves for like veal, they have these like little hutches that they keep them in. And I don't feel good about doing that, but you know, to each his own. What I would do though, is I'd get one of those old calf hutches and turn it into a, like a little mobile dog house is actually an idea that I have. And so that might be something I end up doing for her. Um, yeah. So I'm thinking about that. Okay. I am so far behind. When you first looked into buying a farm, do you look at any upstate? Yeah, we actually work. Upstate New York was actually something we were very much considering.
Um, like Allison like loves the Hudson Valley area, but like it was way too expensive to find anything there. Like further up, like in the Troyish area, were some things that we were looking at. But uh, I don't know. We just we we had some friends around here in Vermont, and and that kind of was a bigger pull for us, and so that's how we ended up here. I realize that the hoop coop is your production multiplier. Are you considering another hoop coop? Um, maybe. You know, it, it's funny you should actually say that. So, part of what I'm trying to figure out is like, I've, <clears throat> and this is very unprocessed thoughts. So, so just bear with me, guys. So, I have these kind of competing dilemmas as I think about the long term growth of the farm, where it's like, how do I have more winter space for the cattle? How do I have hay storage for the cattle where I don't need to have it wrapped in plastic anymore? Because I really hate doing that. I'd much rather have unwrapped round bales stored under some sort of structure. And then how could I actually grow more stuff in the, the summer months and extend my growing season? Um, like all of those are considerations. And I'm so I'm trying to figure out how to make those three things work together. I don't have a solution for it yet, but I'm but I'm, I'm definitely trying to come up with something for sure. Oh wait, now I'm curious. Wait, six five zero two channel. What did what did they say? Oh, uh, wow. You know, I'm I'm really glad to hear that, and and kudos to you for doing that, and uh, thank you for saying that because it, it makes me feel good to hear that that helped. Um, and and yeah, I hope I hope you're doing okay. But uh, thank thank you for saying that six five zero two, and and I hope things are are getting a little better. Um, and so that that's really good to hear. Yeah, I could try to do that. that. That'll be a summer activity, but but the answer is yes. Let me. I'll try to do that at some point this summer. <laughs> yeah, that'll never happen, Joyce. Never, ever, ever. <laughs> I. I mean, I don't. Th I don't think she would want that. My. My insight. I'll, I'll. Joyce, I will promise you that when I get off this live stream and go downstairs, and and she and I are hanging out, I will ask her. But my guess is that's going to be a no, like a hard no. So uh, don't hold your breath on it. But I, I will promise to ask her, and uh, I'll probably report back in the next farm meeting if you ask me again. <laughs> oh yeah, no. So all right, so so, and I always get a kick out of RJ's questions because they're they're like hyper local here. Um, so so here in Peach of Vermont, this is I, I've talked about this in a video I made a couple years back, but uh, so. Like back in the day, like before trucks and automobiles, when they're like just horse drawn carriages out here, like in the winter months, they would take horses in sleighs. And that's how people got around. But, you know, they needed to have a way to pack down the snow so that your, your horses could travel on it and your sleighs could travel on that. And so they had these devices known as snow rollers. So it's like picture like a, a steam roller um, for snow. Hang on. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull up pictures of this because... I love sharing this. And so there's actually a snow roller museum here in Peachum, Vermont. And um, yeah, so so yes, I have visited the, the museum. Uh, the guy Dick, uh, who I think Dick Hovey, I believe he just passed away not too long ago, um, was like the expert on it. And I, I had a couple good conversations with him over the years. But yeah, when I talk about a snow roller, this is what I'm talking about. All right, so these are the snow rollers. So, like, this is what a snow roller looks like. So, like, they'd have horses out, and the horses would pull, like, a carriage that had these snow rollers. And, um, oh, wait. Oh, it's not like, okay. And so, like, basically, they would draw them, like, here. Like, this is kind of what it looks like. And, uh, yeah, it was really, really cool. Um, and yeah, we have a museum. And so if you're ever in Peachum, it's not open all the time. It's only on like, like two or three days a year that it's open now. Uh, but, uh, yeah, you can actually find snow rollers at the snow roller museum. Um, hold on. Let me see if I can actually find the Peachum snow roller museum. Uh, 
But yes, to answer your question, RJ, I've been there. Yep, all right, here, here it is. So, I mean, it's basically just a barn with old snow rollers in it, but it's really cool because you can kind of go around and see them. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I, I strongly encourage people to go visit that when it's open. I think, I think the next time it'll be open will be for the 4th of July. I think it's open uh, there. Hey, Michaela, good to see you. So Michaela is the very, very talented artist who made the Abbey art for um the shirt and uh hold on michaela i'm gonna just drop a link for your stuff uh i think i still have it buried in my links but yeah michaela is wicked talented i i like i said i have this painting that she did um that is actually the artwork that's used on the shirt it like hangs up on the wall on the other side of my office here um and i love it and it's yeah it's one of my favorite pieces and so as always michaela thank you for that um but yes michaela is the super talented artist who made uh the um oh wait i can't find your thing michaela if uh i'm trying to see if if maybe if you post it and, and katrina who is our awesome moderator if, if she sees it uh feel free to share michaela's thing if michaela posts it um <clears throat> so yeah okay oh i want to talk to you i have some this i'm going to answer your question cyber tooth but this also triggers something i want to share with you guys that i have as a plan for uh this uh summer that's going to be fun and this is where the hatchery is going to make things really interesting so um my favorite duck breed i don't know i kind of think the cayugas are my favorite duck breed um the cayugas are the black ducks or the black and white ducks that we have um they're just very chill they're very good tempered they make good moms um they're they're my favorite breed of duck that we have you know i started first raising khaki campbells then i added the cayugas we've experimented with pecans over the years we've also added uh runner ducks our, our ducks right now are mostly like hybrids of runner cayuga and khaki campbell um but honestly i actually have an experiment i want to try to do i'm going to pick a couple of duck females like probably three or four of them of different breeds and i'm going to separate them from the rest of the flock and ralph the duck who's our little call duck if you guys have seen those videos with ralph i'm going to have him with those ducks and i'm going to try to hatch their eggs and so i want to try to do a call duck hybrid and i'm not even sure if it's going to work like i'm not even sure if he can get the job done if you know what i mean but i'm going to give it a shot and so what i'll probably do is like set up a little separate area for them for about a month let them spend that time together um collect up a bunch of eggs put those eggs in the incubator, give it a shot, see if it works. If it works, all right. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Um, and, and so that's that's actually something I wanna try to experiment with. And so that'll be a project that happens this spring. Um, because I really like Ralph the Duck. Ralph the Duck is a great duck. I am very happy that he's here on our farm these days. So yeah, there you go. <laughs> I mean, I've made Morgan shirts before. There's like the, the I'm not a cat person shirt that I was offering for a while. Um, uh, so yeah, I'm still building it. Like, like I said earlier at the beginning of the live stream, I just put the door on today. I am almost done finishing the vent and then I got to hang lights and, uh, then kind of just basically move in. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's getting very close to done, but you will see another build video posted on YouTube tomorrow morning, uh, around 11 o'clock. <laughs> that's a pretty cool idea all right I'm, I'm taking a screen capture of this one Brittany, because i really like that idea that's a that's a cool idea i don't think she's going to be up for it but I, I i will propose that <laughs> exactly jim that that is the plan <laughs> i i would like to believe in ralph too okay wait, wait what's casey asking hold on So, yeah, I'm sorry, Casey. Yeah, so so I am doing my best to try to find the the so here here is the dilemma I have. So, um the suppliers of the shirts are the one and then the company that I use to do the fulfillment because I'm not just sitting here stuffing envelopes. I just wouldn't be able to do that. They would get lost in the mail. I'm horrible when it comes to that stuff in general anyways. Um they're the ones who are actually doing the fulfillment. So the way it typically works is I'm designing the artwork. I'm like kind of building out the shirt and then I'm, I'm like marketing and selling the shirt. And then I have a company that I'm working with who is basically printing and fulfilling that, that order. Um, 
And so I am limited by what they have available. And I've actually gone out and looked a couple of different times for as many different sizes as possible. The one I actually have right now is the best option available, to be quite honest. And I've really looked hard on the size inclusivity part of it. Um, and, and that's the best. But even there, as, as uh, you know, um, I think it was Ramen Noodle was saying, like, uh, uh, like, you know, sometimes they run out of stock for certain colors. Like they're out of the pink, even though they have the green still in 4X. And yeah, they, I don't think that anybody had 5X. And so I'm, I'm really sorry. And I'm going to keep working on trying to find better options, but I am to a certain extent limited to uh, the, the availability from ben vendors. What are you going to do to keep your and hoop coop garden safe? Um, huh. Okay, so I was like, wait, why do I have to keep the hoop coop garden safe? I completely forgot the the goose invasion. So the the goose invasion is just a matter of I've I've actually fixed my fencing problem, and so that won't be a problem this year. Uh, where where my teenage goslings went through and marauded the garden last year, the hoop coop last year. The eggs, I still don't know. I mean, the reality is this: my duck flock is getting kind of old. Um, they're, you know, I've got some gals in there who are going to be, let's see, they were born in 2018. So they're like almost, you know, six years old. And that means they're laying very few eggs. And so I'm not getting a ton of eggs from the ducks anymore. Um, I don't have any plans to heavily, uh, uh, like add more ducks. Like I'll do some fun experiments like the Ralph experiment, but I'm not, I'm not going to be like making it a big part of the farm anymore. Um, just because it, it doesn't, uh, um, like really, I don't know. It just financially it just doesn't make sense is the, is the real answer. And so, uh, that would be what limits me there. And so, yeah, I might sacrifice some eggs to some crows and that just kind of is what it is. Uh, and that'll, that'll sort of be what happens. All right, my throat, I can feel my throat going. See, I, I've already shot two videos today and I've, I've been talking, so I apologize if my voice starts to go. I got to shoot another video tomorrow. Um, you know what, Anna? I will try to actually do that. Yeah, I think I think I can convince her to do one of those. So, so maybe we'll do a sort of podcast slash video episode on that in the not-too-distant future. So... It takes me, I mean, it depends on the video and how much editing and the type of video, like the videos on the Morgan Gold channel. Um, I, I actually do all the editing from pretty much all of those. Um, and those take probably about 30 hours or so to edit. You'll, you'll notice there's like a lot more to them than like a regular like farm video. The farm videos take me, you know, I mean, right now it's kind of funny cause I'm shooting sort of like constantly. Um, but like, uh, I don't know, like it's probably about 15 to 20 hours worth of work per video. I have an editor who helps me out. She's incredible, Valerie. And uh, she's doing a lot of the editing on those videos these days um, so that it frees me up so I can do the Morgan Gold videos. Uh, yeah. Um, and then, and then actually to answer your question, by the way, uh, Cybertooth. Um, and then usually I'm like about, a week to two weeks behind real life. And that's for a couple of reasons. One, just because I need the time to do the production on it. But then two, it's so stressful. If I'm like just finishing a video the night before, I I'd much rather have the video done like a couple of days before. And then like, I'm, I'm already ahead. And so like having that little bit of buffer time makes it just a lot less stressful. It lets me do things like go away and leave the farm for a couple of days. Um, if I do planning, right. And so, uh, that that's kind of it all falls into that. It just it just makes it all more sustainable for me personally. Um, is is the real answer there? Do you ever think you'll make a long sleeve shirt? Yes, meow. I actually want to do a long sleeve shirt. I I see. Here's the thing: t shirt season is relatively short around here. Long sleeve shirt season is probably nine months of the year, and so I personally would get more use out of them as well if they were long sleeve. Um, yeah. Okay, Christopher Melfi. Is that like a Sopranos reference, or is that just your name? I, and I don't, I don't mean to ask that flip, but it just <laughs> seeing those two names together kind of makes me think Sopranos. Do you ever? Do you have any suggestions? I moved to a large piece of land, and I'm trying to get myself started. I just don't know where to begin. Some people say donkeys and chickens, 
but what would you recommend from experience? I mean, it's it's tough, Christopher. I mean, with kind of based on what you're saying, I think that the context of their land and the situation, like what climate are you in? What's the land? Is it like you know, a whole bunch of pasture? Is it woods? Like, you know, kind of all of those factors come into play all really, really matter. I think, though, if you don't have any experience and and you've never really worked with animals or done anything with animals, I would strongly encourage you to start with poultry. Um, chickens are, are definitely the easiest to start with. But I could also see value in starting with ducks. I actually started with ducks. They were the first animals I ever had. Um, so from my experience, that that wasn't too bad. Um, I could also actually encourage people to I, – I could see starting with geese because um, geese are surprisingly easy too. Uh, and so they're just a little bit more expensive and uh, I don't know – you have to think a little bit more about how you manage them. But once you figure out how to manage them, I'd actually argue they're the easiest form of poultry to have. Um, and so, yeah, I would start with, with poultry and I would probably say chickens. If like, if you wanted the easiest go with chickens, uh, but, but don't start with donkeys and chickens do this. The other advice I would have is do one animal at a time, like start with one animal, learn how to raise them, then move on to the next one, then move on to the next one. I mean, for me, in 2018, I started raising ducks. 2019, I started raising geese. Uh, late 2019 into 2020, I started raising chickens. 2021 was when I actually started raising, actually, I mean, tw also like beginning of 2020, late 2020, late 2019 into 2020, I started raising a livestock guardian dog. Um, 2021, the end of 2021, I, I started raising cattle. 2023, I started raising pigs. And so you'll notice like each animal I gave like basically a year to have uh, just a buffer and, and give myself a chance to catch up. And so as you're thinking about that too, I, I would strongly advise against doing two animals at once that you've, you've never done either of them. Start with one, learn how to raise them, then move on to another one. Don't try to do it all. You know, I, I see a lot of folks who, particularly when it kind of comes to homesteading, will try to do all the things. And they'll be like, I want to have a garden, I want to have chickens, and I want to have ducks, and I want to have cattle or sheep. And like, and they do it all, and they get overwhelmed, and they get burnt out. And within two years, they don't want to do any of it. And so my advice would be start with one thing. If you want to just start with a garden, too, that's a good way to go. Um, that would be the go. Um, okay. I have three brown chickens. Do you have name ideas? Hmm. Hmm. What breed? I guess that, that, that matters to me. Um, like if they're Rhode Island reds, uh, or I guess they're kind of brown or like, uh, I don't know. Thank you, Rebecca. <laughs> Good to see you, by the way. I feel like I haven't seen you around here for a while. Good to see you. Um, and uh, it's it's not. Talk to Hank Green about where they. Oh yeah, I'll, I'll I'll let me look to see where they get their shirts. Um, yeah, I'm curious. I I think they have their own merch company, if I'm not mistaken. I, I let me I'll look into that. That's a that's a good suggestion, Ramen Noodle. Hey, happy birthday to you too, Fernie. Pisces Unite, right? You know what, Z-Man? I'm not right now. Maybe later. Um, uh, but not right now. Do you ever want to visit Romania? Um, I don't know. You know, my... I think it was like my great, great, great grandfather. Or maybe my great, great grandfather uh, was from Romania. Um... But yeah, I've never had strong inclination. Actually, the the country that I'd really be curious to go to that's, I don't know, I guess kind of in that area would be the Czech Republic. Um, I don't know, like going to Prague just always seemed really intriguing to me. Uh, like I, I love a lot of like the Czech filmmakers, uh, authors like uh, uh, Bohemian Herbal, I think is his name. Um, yeah, like I like a lot of that type of stuff. And so honestly, Czech Republic would be the place I'd, I'd most likely go to if I'm thinking of like, Central Eastern Europe ish type area type thing. Oh, those are pretty good. Angus, Kathy, and Winnie. Agnes, Kathy, and Winnie. Sorry. Um, yeah. 
Oh, well, thank you. And I, I've been to India. I love India. India is great. I, I had so much fun going to India. Um, some friends of ours got married and, uh, the, he was from India, and so like us and a bunch of other friends, like we all went out to India for like two weeks, and it was it was a, that was a great trip. That was a lot of fun. Uh, the answer is yes, Brittany. I mean, what it is is the eggs just are a lot of labor to produce, and there's just not a ton of demand for them, and so it just doesn't make it worth it. And then the breed of duck that I raise um, isn't a great meat duck, like. Really, the only time I ever, like, harvest ducks for meat around here is when I'm calling drakes, meaning, like, I, I just need to keep my ratio the same. And so, I, I you know, I, will, I won't have as many drakes on the farm as I, as I have that hatch. And so um, that will be, uh, like, kind of what, what limits it. And so it's, that's what it comes down to. But when it comes to a meat bird, goose is far superior to duck. And so that's, that's how I end up doing what I'm doing. Veilcat, tomorrow morning, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, you will see episode three of Building the Hatchery. Uh, that will post, uh, yeah, tomorrow at 11. Oh, they're Turkin. Oh, then honestly, I would, I would go, I'd give them turkey names. <laughs> <laughs> like gobbler <laughs> um tom and uh gobbler tom and uh uh oh gosh what's his name william bradford uh oh william brewster yeah william brewster <laughs> and, and they're female i'd still give them those same names Oh, yeah. All right. Cool. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that, Katrina. By the way, shout out to Katrina. And if you guys can go check out So and Tear on YouTube, uh, you know, these would not be possible without moderators like her. And so so thank you Katrina, for all the help. And uh, yeah, major shout out to her and to Michaela. OK. All right. We're getting down to the last uh, last couple questions here. Hey, hey, what's going on, Cody? Happy belated birthday. Yeah, see, and, and Cody's another person who, who's been doing this a lot. And you'll see, the, you know, you get one, start start with that one and see if you like it or not. Because here's the thing. You might raise chickens and hate it and say, hey, I just want to have a garden. The good news is if you just have a few chickens, it's easy to find some home for the chickens and move on to something else. If you get into everything all at once, ooh, it's a lot. Do you think you'll ever make pants? No, I don't think I'll ever make pants. I sweatshirts, long sleeve shirts, hats. I could see producing all of those as merch. Pants? I don't know. There's not a big pants market. I think it's because it's like sizing, like as hard as it is on sizing for shirts, as you guys have seen with some of the discussion tonight. Um, I think it's even harder with pants. I mean, golly, you got the waist and you got the length. Yeah. Yeah, I know, right? Like, I was actually just listening to an interview with Hank Green. Um, he was on uh, uh, Colin and Samir. And, uh, yeah, it's it's crazy the number of things he's got going on. He's, he's an interesting dude. I will make – here is a promise, Bruno. Later this summer, I will make another Unsolved Mysteries video. I've actually been saving up. I have a, a list of, of, of Unsolved Mysteries to add to the mix. Yes. So, Yo-Yo, the pigs are going to be almost on the other side of the farm this year. So my plan is, you guys know the hill that you would see me ride up on the bike with Abby every morning in the summer, like when I go up to see the cattle? Along that hill, along that side will be actually where I'm planning to have the the pigs this year. So so they'll basically like be on the other side of the farm um, from where they were last year. That's crazy to me. RJ, based on all the questions you've asked me over the years, I just assumed you were like living in Barnet or something <laughs> based on the people, you know, like all of that. Like it, that's, oh, that's funny that you've, you haven't been here in about 17 years. Yeah. 
Yes. So, so, all right. So, so, you know, it's funny, uh, I guess about a month ago, I posted a comment on, uh, I don't know if you guys know Girl with Dogs. Uh, she's like this wicked talented, Vanessa, wicked, wicked talented uh, uh, dog. This makes great videos too. Um, she and I are trying to figure out a way to work together on something. It's a little tricky because she's in Canada. And so I can't go to her with dogs and my dogs don't like to travel either. It's particularly Toby. Abby would actually probably like traveling. Um, and for her, it's tricky to bring the equipment to do grooming here but but she might end up coming to the farm this summer we haven't quite worked it out yet but uh that that is something we were talking about i i'd love to have that happen i think that'd be so much fun hey helen good to see you i feel like i haven't seen you in forever too it's so much fun like seeing you guys like pop up here and there um yeah I yeah I would I actually I live in zip hoodies too I I love zip hoodies I think the trouble is branded zip hoodies is like like because of the zip it's harder to have like like you can only have like a little chest emblem or something on the back um but but I would totally do it <laughs> and meow would wear gold soft farm pants I I didn't think there was a market for it <laughs> down with <this. laughs> Um, so the birds will definitely free range, but they won't have free access to the pond. They'll have like occasional access, but I got to like keep limiting it for, for the most part. Um, you know what, Helen, I never figured out who took that, that SD card. I still, to this day, don't know. Yeah, no, I do too. I think she's, like I said, wicked, wicked talented. <sighs> Okay, guys, I am kind of tapped out. I appreciate you, though, hanging out here tonight. Um, a couple of things, just final announcements for you. Number one, yeah, new video tomorrow. It's episode three of the Hatchery Build. Check it out. Uh, number two, um, uh, I will be uh, uh, posting a new video on the other channel, Morgan Gold, next week. And so if you're missing out yet, go check out the other channel, Morgan Gold. Uh, and then number three, thank you to uh, Katrina at So and Terra, who's our moderator. And then number four, don't forget, if you haven't read it yet, Toby Dog of Goldshaw Farm. It is still available. Uh, you can find it right on Amazon. Um, and the sequel's coming. I actually probably on Saturday, based on the pace I'm writing at, will finish writing the first draft of the second book, which is going to be the working title is The Eight Lives of Little Barn Cat. And. Uh, that will be something I, I put out. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be this year, but it, it'll definitely be coming. And so you definitely want to read the first book before the second book comes out. And I, I, th I actually think the second book's going to be even better. So you, you don't want to like, you're going to want to get into this series. And, and there's going to probably be, I think I might have a total of like six books, six to eight books that I end up producing in this whole series. And so uh, strongly encourage you to check it out and uh, mean the world to me if you read it. I, I, I love writing these books and, uh, you know, I've appreciated so much of the feedback and support you guys have shown. And so if you get a chance, check out Toby Dog of Goldshaw Farm. And with that, I hope everybody has a great night. And yes, I will ask Allison if she'll let us make a t-shirt, but I don't think she will. Have a good night, guys.